Family Foster, the Common Ground International. Welcome to today's Spanish quick tip lesson, all about three tips to use the Spanish subjunctive. If you have been studying Spanish for any amount of time, when you hear the S word subjunctive, maybe some anxiety or dread creeps in. That's okay. It is a new frontier in your Spanish learning. It opens up a whole new world of possibilities, okay? But it does have some mala fama. So let's jump in about the Spanish subjunctive, focusing on the present subjunctive, okay? In our Common Ground International Learning Community, um, over 20 plus years of working with adult Spanish learners, when we start talking about the subjunctive, here are some stereotypes that creep in. Can you relate? It's mysterious. It's a new frontier of learning, as I just mentioned. So much vagueness. It's not necessarily black and white. Yes, there are some black and white uses, okay? But there's some gray in there between. It can be frustrating. And for many of our students, it makes them feel like they haven't been spending the amount of time learning Spanish that they have been. It makes them feel like they've never learned Spanish before. So let's jump in. Primeramente, que es el subjuntivo? When we say the subjunctive, what is it? I'm going to give you some examples right here. Dudo que él vaya al supermercado. I doubt he's going to the supermarket. Es importante que hable con sus pacientes. It's important that you speak with your patients. Ojalá que todo vaya bien. I hope that everything goes well. Es importante que ellos entreguen la tarea el viernes. It's important that they turn in the homework on Fridays. Okay, so unos ejemplos start thinking if you notice any patrones, any patterns in here. Okay, antes de hablar del subjuntivo, what you need to know are there are three modos verbales in Espanol. So three verb categories. Within uh, these three general categories, there's all the different verb conjugations, past, present, the perfects, pluperfect, okay, subjunctive. But many of you know the indicativo, el modo indicativo. This is where we talk about facts, and objective statements. I went to the store, it's raining, it's snowing, okay? Things like that. Numero dos de imperativo, this is commands, giving orders and commands. Y numero tres, el subjuntivo. Okay, if this is facts and objective statements, this is commands, this is our new frontier in Spanish learning to express subjective thoughts, doubts, desires, Unknown, uncertainty, wishes, recommendations, suggestions, muchas expresiones diferentes, all right? So, uh, aquí, deseos, dudas, lo desconocido, the unknown, el abstracto, the, the abstract, emociones, recomendaciones, etc. So, unos ejemplos of these tres categorías, so you can see them, okay? So, uh, in el modo indicativo, I go to the store, in English, right? I go to the store. It, porque tenemos esos tres modos en inglés también. So, en español y inglés. Okay, so, voy al supermercado. That's a fact. You go to the store. El imperativo, you're speaking to your husband. I'm speaking to my husband. Go to the store. Okay, en español, ve al supermercado. Go to the store. Y el subjuntivo right here, I doubt he will go to the store. Now, in mi caso, a mi esposo le encanta ir al supermercado. So, este no es uh, la verdad para mi caso. But I doubt he will go to the store. Dudo que él vaya al supermercado. Dudo que él vaya al supermercado. Aquí es el modo subjuntivo. It's a doubt, okay? Excelente. Um, just to recap, so the indicative, factual statements, certainty, objectivity, to ask questions, express opinions, okay? All verbs, all verbs can be used in the indicative mode. The subjuntivo, desires, to express desires and wishes, recommendations, doubts, uncertainties, emotions, the unknown, the abstract, okay? And subjective thoughts, excelente. So when we talk about the present subjunctive, Oftentimes, there are three grammatical elements that are necessary in order to have a subjunctive sentence. So, and um, I'm going to use the, the term a clause, a dependent, independent clause. And basically, it's two different parts of a sentence. Okay, so here we go. So for the present subjunctive, these are the three necessary elements. Okay, two different subjects, one in the in independent clause and one in the dependent clause. 
I'm going to show you an example soon, but you need two different subjects. Okay, so I want you to do this for me. So I is the first subject, want you is the second subject. That's in un ejemplo en inglés. En español, or we'll get to the Spanish example soon. She doubts that I can do it, as an example. She is the first subject in the independent clause, and then I is the second subject. They recommend that we see that movie. Okay, so they, first subject, we, second subject. Excelente. So, in addition to two different subjects, the another necessary element, numero dos, is a relative pronoun, okay? A que, a quien, a como, a cuando also, but you need a relative pronoun that breaks up that independent clause and the dependent clause. Por ejemplo, it separates the two clauses. Yo quiero que tú lo hagas. So, aquí tenemos the que breaks up the yo Quiero que tú lo hagas, okay? So it breaks up those two clauses. You have the first subject here and the second uh, subject pronoun right there. Excelente. Otro ejemplo. No me importa quién sea. It doesn't matter who it is. So it does not matter to me who it is. So two different subjects and the quién is the relative pronoun that breaks up that, uh, that, that sentence. Tú puedes cortar ese tomate como quieras. This is a running joke entre mi esposo y yo porque cortamos tomates diferentes, okay? Maneras diferentes. So, tú puedes cortar ese tomate como, this is a relative pronoun, as you wish, okay? Excelente. So, uh, la, la tercera característica that we need, okay, are, and I should say, we don't need them all the time, but in general, when we're using the subjunctive, we need these three elements. Two different subjects, a relative pronoun, absolutely, and if we have two different subjects, we have two different variables, right? Okay, so one that expresses a wish, a desire, a doubt, a recommendation, an order, okay, and then one that is followed by a verb in the subjunctive verb form. Okay, excelente. So, I'm going to teach you an acronym that we use to teach our students about when to use the subjunctive. So, we have the three necessary grammatical structures, the two different subjects, a relative pronoun, two different verbs, but when do you use the subjunctive? Okay, we don't, we know that we don't use it for facts and, um, and objective statements or commands, but in the mundo subjetivo, in the subjective world, that's when we use it. So I want you to memorize this acronym, WEIRDO, okay? And we're going to go through what each letter stands for. So WEIRDO, the W is to express wills, wishes, wants, okay? Unos ejemplos de algunos verbos, desear, esperar, insistir, necesitar, preferir, okay, querer. So those are some examples of some of the verbs. Not nah, this is not a complete list at all, but wills. Emotion, I'm gonna give you some examples a little bit. E stands for emotion, okay? Unos ejemplos de verbos, alegrarse, esperar, sentir. The I stands for impersonal expressions. We saw some of these. Es importante que, es bueno que, es malo que, okay? Es imposible que. So these um, impersonal expressions. The R stands for requests and recommendations. So recomendar, sugerir, mandar, pedir, permitir. The D stands for doubt or, do, or denial. We saw dudo que, okay, negar que, to deny, no, crear que, no, pienso que. Excelente. And the O stands for orders and obligations, okay? So obligar, dejar, impedir, exigir. Okay, so memorize this weirdo acronym, and once you have this uh, weirdo acronym, then you'll know if you are using, if you should be using the subjunctive or not. Unos ejemplos, let's check out some examples right here, okay? So for the W to express wills, which is what? Quiero que él tome Uber en vez de el bus, en vez del bus, okay? So I want him to take an Uber. So this is what you want someone else to do. Notice we have quiero, the first subject, uh, broken up by the relative pronoun que, 
and then el tome. Okay, so a second subject and then the verb conjugation. Now, verb conjugations is a whole other lesson how to conjugate verbs in the present subjunctive. So be sure to um, uh, click down below this video if you're watching it on YouTube and I'll link to the present tense subjunctive verb conjugations. Or if you're watching this on the blog, I'll leave a link down below as well. Okay, e emotion. Un ejemplo, me alegro mucho que hayan pasado el fin de semana juntos. So it makes me so happy that they have spent the weekend together. So again, here's our motion verb, here's our relative pronoun, and then here's the subjuntivo, okay? Excelente. The I for impersonal expressions es importante que. So that is, this is where an exception where you won't see necessarily two different subjects in these impersonal expressions. It's kind of inherent that you're expressing it's important that. I think that it's important that, okay? But we just say that for simplificación, es importante, es malo, es imposible, because that's an opinion that you're expressing. Es importante que ellos hagan toda la tarea. It's important that they do all the homework. So here's our relative pronoun. And then hacer, el verbo hacer, in the subjective, subjunctive form, hagan. Excelente. Request recommendations, un ejemplo. Recomiendo que coman en el restaurante nuevo. I recommend that they eat in that new restaurant. Down denial, no creo, I don't believe, que tengamos escuela mañana con la cantidad de nieve que estamos recibiendo. Okay, so I don't think, there's a doubt, I don't think that we will have school tomorrow. And orders and obligations, mis padres obligan al perro que se quede afuera de la casa. So my parents oblige, make, um, it must happen that the dog stays outside of the house, okay? Excelente. So you can see some examples of this weirdo acronym in acción. Ahora, tenemos aquí unos ejemplos más, más específicos. I break down some more examples for you. La nutricionista recomienda que yo coma más carne. So let's break this down. So we have two subjects, la nutricionista and yo, okay? And we have the relative pronoun que. You're going to know that que is the most often used relative pronoun in connecting the independent and the dependent clause, okay? Okay, and then our weirdo example is una recomendación, our right here, recomienda, okay? And then this is coma, es comer in the present tense um, subjunctive verb conjugation. Excelente. Otro ejemplo, yo quiero que tú limpies el baño. So I want you to clean the bathroom, okay? So our two subjects, yo and tú, broken up by que, and then a verb in el subjuntivo. Muy bien, amigos. Okay, I have a little quiz time for you. This is just you need to determine if these uh, situations are indicativo, so facts, okay, or subjuntivo, expressing doubts, desires, unknown, um, recommendations, suggestions, all that kind of stuff. So you just let me know. I'm gonna read a sentence and put me on pause and grab a piece of paper, write it down on your phone, indicativo or subjuntivo. Those are your dos opciones, okay? Es un libro fantástico. Es un libro fantástico. You let me know, does it have those three elements, okay? Um, even though it might be expressing opinion, it needs those three elements. Número dos. Él recomienda que yo lo encuentre y lo lea inmediatamente. So we're talking about the book. It's a fantastic book. He recommends that I find it and read it immediately. Él recomienda que lo encuentre y lo lea inmediatamente. Número tres, pero Amazon y Barnes and Noble ya no tienen más. They don't have any more of este, este libro. Ya no tienen más. Número cuatro, dudo que puede encontrarlo en otro lugar. So I doubt that I'll be able to find it in another place. Y finalmente, número cinco, ¿qué recomiendas que yo haga? ¿Qué recomiendas que yo haga? Es un buen ejemplo. Ustedes me pueden dar una recomendación en los comentarios abajo. You can leave me a recommendation in the comments below, testing out the subjunctive. Excelente. Okay, you ready for the answers? Here we go. Numero uno, indicativo. Okay, there's not all those three elements. Numero dos, 
It's a recommendation in the weirdo. It's the R recommendation. You have two different subjects, two different verbs. Excelente. Okay. Numero tres es indicativo. It's just a fact. It's just, there's no emotion tied with it. No, no opinion or anything. It's just fact. Barnes Noble sold out. Um, dudo. Okay. There's our, there's our warning, our trigger right there. Dudo. I doubt. Que okay. puede encontrarlo en otro lugar. Subjuntivo. Muy bien. Numero cinco. ¿Qué recomiendas que yo hago? What do you recommend that I do? Okay, so this is a uh, recommendar, another R one. It's a subjuntivo. So how did you know? Let us know in the comments down below and be sure to download the lesson notes and some more exercises. So click on the button. If you're watching this on the blog, go to the, or on the YouTube, go to the blog post and click on the button to download the notes. If you're on the block, um, go ahead and click on the button down below. But now it's your turn. Te toca a ti. It doesn't do any good to keep all this información in el cerebro. Hay que aplicarlo y usarlo. Aplica el subjuntivo. You can just start listening and identifying whether it's indicativo or subjuntivo. Listening in on conversa conversations. Excelente. And por supuesto, arriesga, take, take a risk, okay? Abre la boca y comete errores. Make mistakes. Muchísimas gracias. Hasta la próxima vez for the next lesson, Spanish Quick Tips. I'm going to link a couple things, okay? The present subjunctive verb conjugations below this. And be sure to download the lesson notes. Hasta luego. Chao.